What's good? It's your boy Fanon. And believe it or not, man, I'm about to talk about a, a subject that I'm getting. Man, I'm telling you, this dude never ceases to amaze me, man. Eddie Hearn just pretty much came flat out and said that Deontay Wilder is a massive risk. And that's why Anthony Joshua more than likely is not going to take this fight. And why they're sticking with a flat fee. It's just ridiculous, man. And I have no clue how people in the UK can support this. It is more trash attitude. It's the trashiest attitude that I've actually heard out of somebody's mouth about boxing. I'm going to do a live stream about this later today. So as usual, you know, I hope you... you <laughs> Accept my invitation to attune, attend the live stream um, where we ha- we have really good boxing fans, knowledgeable boxing fans, and we usually have very, very good conversations. So I hope that, you, that you'll that you join. The best way to know about it is by hitting subscribe and the bell icon, and that way you can be notified of when, uh, when it happens. But this Eddie Hearn guy, man, I listened to a couple interviews. I listened to Luda Bella. Luda Bella, and this is a part that somebody told me about, right, of the Dante's Boxing Nations interview, where, <laughs> where uh, Luda Bella was like, look, man, it's a, it's a trash offer. It's a flat fee offer. Nobody in these type of circumstances gives, makes an offer to you for a flat fee because you don't know how good it's, how big the fight's going to be. It's the biggest fight in boxing. And you don't know how big the fight is going to be, right? That is just, and he's like, if you, you, and I'm, honestly, man, I learned something from Luda Bella because I sat back and I was listening to him and he said, look, he was talking to Dante's Boxing Nation. He said, look, man, if you understand, the people that don't understand this, I'm never going to convince. And the people that already know, (laughs) I don't think I need, there's nothing else to say. And I'm one of these people that already knows. A flat fee offer is so ridiculous without going into any of the numbers that you know right then and there that Eddie Hearn is not serious about making this fight. He's the bit he's negotiating against himself and he's negotiating against the other party. I've said this before. I'm not going to go into much more detail about it. Because people, and I don't care, you guys from the UK, you know, you whatever, whoever you are, because you're not serious boxing fans. <laughs> you can't be. You can't be. You definitely never have written a contract in your life or agreed to somebody to go into a joint uh, a joint venture with somebody where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. The only time that you make an, a, a, a flat fee offer to somebody is when you are very sure of what the outcome of the fight is going to, uh, of that adventure is going to be. That's it. If you don't know what it's going to be, you do a percentage deal and you do a percentage deal so that there's incentives on both sides to make the fight bigger and bigger. Eddie Hearn keeps coming with this very lame. It's like, it's so, it's like candy. It's like, some a type of argument that people who don't know any better would fall for but if you do know better you don't fall for and you it look and it sounds ridiculous eddie hearn says things like deontay wilder will earn five and six more times what his deal is right so if he gets 12 million dollars that's and it's it's 12 million dollars it's not 12 million pounds there's 12 million dollars He'll get the more money, five times more money, whatever it is than he'd ever earned before. Are you going to make that same offer to Anthony Joshua where he, Anthony Joshua is going to get five, four or five times more money than he ever did before. And then of course, you know, dummies would say, no, that makes sense to me. You know, you're getting multiple, you're getting multiples of what you've been paid for. And he's going to getting twice as much money as he's paid for, get been paid before. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Except for why don't you throw out that multiple and just pay attention to the dollars. The dollars that are in the fight. 
if it's a hundred million dollar fight or a fifty million dollar fight or a sixty million dollar fight or a thirty million dollar fight, whatever the case is, they're getting paid in actual dollars for the value that they bring for that fight. How much is that fight going to make, and how much are you put? How much value do you bring to that fight? Period. And there could be there's situations where Deontay Wilder, if he earned two million dollars, but his biggest purse was actually four million dollars. So it's three times more. Who cares times more? It's twelve million dollars out of one hundred million dollars. Right. Flat fee, flat fee or it's twelve. It's twelve million dollars out of 50 million out of 60 or whatever it is. That's how much you're talking about. They're talking about how much the guy actually gets paid out of the money that's earned in that fight. Period. And the, and the more risky the fight is, the more reason that there is to have a percentage fee, not a flat fee. More importantly than that, nobody ever strikes those deals. No, Eddie Ahern has never offered that deal before never offered the deal himself. If he thinks a flat fee is so good, then why didn't he get a flat fee? Why didn't he offer a flat fee to Joseph Parker? Why didn't he offer a flat why didn't he offer a flat fee to Vladimir Klitschko? And the funny thing was he acted and is talking about it as if he had done a favor to Vladimir Klitschko. But anyway, man, that that's what it is. The thing that I want to talk about in this video is this cat said in the middle of running his lips with this nonsense that you just know is nonsense. If you, you just know is nonsense. He says, well, the difference between all these other guys that Deon, that Anthony Joshua has fought before is the risk. This is a massive risk. So why would I want Deon, Anthony Joshua just to make, you know, 30 or $40 million for a fight or pounds for a fight? When he could just fight somebody real easy and continue to fight for $20 million. The dude literally gave that reasoning. Why fight Deontay Wilder, who's a massive risk? Why would we, you know why we overpaid Klitschko? Because it was a less of a risk. Why did we pay? Why did we pay Joseph Parker? Because it was less of a risk. But now we're talking about a massive risk. And since it's a massive risk, why take that fight? He can't argue himself out of his own. It's so blatantly there that this dude does not want to make this fight. How do you excuse that? Deont Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn have made an absolute are making an absolute mockery of the heavyweight division. I miss Vladimir Klitschko. I miss Vitaly Klitschko. <laughs> I've never seen a heavyweight champion act like this. Ever. I'm trying to think if there's another fighter that I've ever seen act like this. It's tough for me to think of one. I know Gennady Golovkin is out there, which is some funniness too. Gennady Golovkin, but Gennady Golovkin you know, fight trying to fight Vanis Mar Marta Rose and a guy who's 154 pounds after having tried to fight S S S Spike O'Sullivan, you know, or uh, what's the other guy's name? Some guy that never fought out of Tijuana before. You know, that's that's getting kind of ridiculous. But at least he's holding out to try to make a fight with another 154 pounder in in Canelo Alvarez <laughs> to make a big payday. And I do believe that <laughs> I do believe that he'll take the fight with Canelo Alvarez. And if there was enough money in, in it, then maybe he would take a fight with Gennady Golovkin. I mean, with um, Charlo, you know, all these other guys. But even that, man, that's like he's not taking the fight so he can earn more money. This is. Could you imagine Muhammad Ali saying something like that? I would, I mean, I just, I'm, I would love to hear somebody give me an example of where Muhammad Ali said, I cannot fight Joe, George Frazier, Joe, uh, Joe Frazier. That is a massive risk. 
I don't want to take that massive risk. I can already make, you know, I know that they offered me $5 million for George Foreman. You know, I know that I know that I got a $5 million offer for George Foreman, but you know, I can just keep, I could fight, um, Jerry Corey, you know, five or six times in a row for, you know, a million dollars each, you know, so why would I want to, why would I want to make, take that massive risk of fighting George Foreman? Right. Could you imagine him saying that? Could you imagine Lennox Lewis saying that? You know, I know that, um, you know, that I can make a lot of money for fighting Evander Holyfield, but you know, Evander Holyfield, that's too much of a risk. Why would I fight him? Why would I fight Evander Holyfield for five, six million dollars when I can fight? Um, when I can fight, uh, what's the guy's name that hit? <laughs> God, what is a what is a heavyweight at the time, man? I can't remember the name of the guy that that wind up punching uh, Riddick Bow in the uh, <laughs> low like five, ten times in a row. Whatever his name was, you know, just some journeyman. May, oh, you know what? I can make. I can make five million. I can make a million dollars beating, you know, pulling Tim Witherspoon out of retirement, fighting him. Or maybe, you know, I could go over to UK and fight, you know, Frank Bruno, you know, fight, fight Frank Bruno two, three times, you know, and I'll make more money fighting Frank Bruno two, three times than I could uh, fight, you know, taking this massive risk of fighting Evander Holyfield. So you got Eddie Hearn flat out saying that Anthony Joshua, that none of these guys were massive risks. You got that right. You got that right. Joseph Parker is not a massive risk. He was, he was favored going, uh, Anthony Joshua was favored going into the fight. Vladimir Klitschko was uh, coming off of, a, hadn't fought in two years and coming off of a loss to Tyson Fury. So was that a risk? That was a decent risk, but it was like, you know, Big money, introduce him at Wembley Stadium. He do fought at home. All right, was that a massive risk? Uh, not according to, you know, not according to uh, Eddie Hearn, right? Charles Martin, was that a massive risk? Just, of course not. But, you know, we can't fight Deontay Wilder because he's a massive risk. And then Eddie Hearn runs around with this this stuff, man. I'm telling you, man, this guy is just, he is so, he makes British boxing look so bad. <laughs> I thought that these guys over there in, in in Great Britain wanted to see good fights, that they were really wanted to have the best fight, the best, and that they were, you know, that that was a place where you knew you were not going to have a bunch of nonsense going on. But this guy has made, this guy has made, he looks, he makes Bob Arum look good. I mean, he lies more than Bob Arum. I mean, he and he pulls out these these things he said in this interview. Like, wow, this is a really a very much a snot like a snot nosed little spoiled brat. He said, um, "How many people are gonna bring, are Deontay Wilder gonna bring over to the UK if he fights in the UK? What ten? You know what I mean? Like, and if it does sell in UK per pay per view, you know, in the United States pay per view, you know, Anthony Joshua, you know, Anthony Joshua is the one." along with him that are, that's going to make that one. So we really think that we're the cash cow in this and we deserve all of this. And yeah, dude, you're, yeah, yeah. You do have the, a lot of support in the UK, man. But is there anywhere in this that you want to talk about Anthony Joshua being the best heavyweight and proving that he's the best heavyweight? Or are you just fixated on making him look like a coward? to the the damn near the entirety of the U.S. boxing com- community. He is absolutely... Now, you know something is bad. When Dan Raphael gets on you... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if Dan Raphael... For Dan Raphael to get on Anthony Joshua and basically say Anthony Joshua's ducking the fight, do you have any idea how bad you have to look in the United States for Dan Raphael to get on you. Don, Dan Raphael is about the most establishment, uh, the most established establishment boxing writer that you could possibly imagine. But he got on, he got on this guy for him to say something like this. 
If Joshua wants to fight with Wilder next, he sh- it sure doesn't seem that way, regardless of what he says. God, dog. It- it's clear in the offer Joshua's promoter, Matchroom Boxing's Eddie Hearn, recently made to the Wilder camp, a flat fee of $12.5 million, take it or leave it, for Wilder's participation in the fight. Of course, $12.5 million large is, is giant money for most people. For, but, if, but for a fight of this magnitude, it's not a serious offer. If Wilder's team, man, team managers Al Heyman, Shelly Finkel, and JDs and promoter Lou DiBella accepted that offer, they would be committing malpractice on behalf, on behalf of their client. For Team Joshua to take Wilder as a $12.5 million expense without cutting him in for a large percentage of the event would, would, could generate in, uh, in the high eight figures is a joke. When Joshua faced Parker to unify the belts, there are three belts last. Parker got one third of the money for the, the event. Wilder is, is worth more than that, obviously. He brings the last piece of the undisputed title to the table. He brings a bigger fan base. And on his own, he generates more money than Parker does. It's that's Dan Raphael, man. And this is where I'm. I mean, seriously, some of you guys in the UK, you got to stop. There's channels that I respect that I'm listening to with this argument. Just take the twelve point five million dollars. You need to take this twelve point million, twelve million dollars. You see no much money that is. That's way more money than you've ever earned before. It would be professional malpractice for his team to accept that offer. Nobody on a fight that could generate $80 million. Nobody, if it was $50 million, is going to take a flat fee. A flat fee. That's the issue with that. That if it does extremely well, Deontay Wilder is left a ton of money on the table. A ton of money on the table. And it's just not real. But what happens is Eddie Hearn, like I've, I've said many times with Eddie Hearn, just wait along. Listen, he talks so much that eventually he's going to let the truth out. It's like my dad used to say, you know, just ask somebody the same question over and over and over again. And the, if a guy gets asked to say the best liars, if you ask him the same question 13 times, they're going to they're going to contradict themselves eventually. And just like that movie in Minister Society where you had a guy, Bill, Bill Duke, sitting there, he puts these guys in a chair and just asks them the question over and over again. Eddie, is that a fair deal? Eddie, is that a fair deal? Eddie, is that a fair deal? Oh, yes, it's a fair. It's a fair deal because it's nowhere near 60 million dollars. Eddie, you know, you said that it was a hundred million dollar fight, you know, like three weeks ago right yes yes but i said i hoped i mean i didn't mean it that it actually was what i meant was i was hoping that it was well eddie if you hope that it was do you just or do you just pull any number out i mean i would think you'd hope it would be a billion dollars right why would you hope 100 why would you hope a hundred million pounds why didn't you hope for a billion oh well you know because i wanted to sound somewhat realistic oh so you wanted it to sound somewhat realistic so 100 million pounds is realistic is it eddie is it eddie is it eddie no it's not realistic but then why did you say that why didn't you just say you hope that it could do a billion oh and by the way why doesn't he want the fight (laughs) because it's a massive risk it's a massive risk nobody under these other guys were massive risks just it's just the dude is ridiculous, man. And it's and it should be embarrassing to the UK. I mean, we I would fess up. I would, honestly, man, there's American promoters that I say are embarrassments all the time. I will come out in a minute and say Oscar De La Hoya with his antics and his issues. That he's an embarrassment. He is to American boxing. He, <laughs> he's an embarrassment. It's not cool to have one of your best fighters in U.S., you know, in recent memory in the United States, getting caught up in the type of stuff he gets caught up in. It's an embarrassment. I will criticize Bob Arum because Bob Arum lies like a rug. 
I mean, we will criticize our fighters if our fighters aren't taking serious fights. We will criticize Keith Thurman for for sitting on his belts and doing exactly what Anthony Josh was doing. You guys should stop defending this guy, man. It makes you look really, really bad. Really bad. No heavyweight champion, no self-respecting heavyweight champion would behave the way that Anthony Josh was behaving, nor would he allow his promoter to do it for him. He that's the truth. He's a massive, he's a massive risk, and Eddie Hearn's a massive embarrassment for the UK. And with that, I'm out, Pete.